hot diggity. Um, did I just say that? My um, my interview subject today is uh, is a Hollywood hottie, a Hollywood heartthrob, and I remember. Uh, very early on when I arrived in L.A., I went to uh, an Australian theatre company, now defunct, event, and I saw him across a crowded room and I was like, holy heck, that's Martin Dinglewall! <laughs> I was such a fangirl. Welcome to Take Fountain. Ah, uh, Ella, Ella. Um, okay, firstly, let me echo all of that. I saw Ella across the room. I'm like, hot diggity! Um, thank you, man. <laughs> that's my absolute pleasure. Um so uh, you're somewhere on the coast of Australia at the moment. You're clearly at a beach for the day. Thank you for bringing that into our world. It's almost like part of the package now. Right. <laughs> how, how important is that to um, for you to connect with nature, like on a regular basis? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, you know... Even if you approach it just from science with regards to positive ions and, you know, and, and, and replenishment, but for me as a water baby, it's, I'm born and raised in Bondi Beach. You know, I've, I've got that level of privilege in my life. I mean, in the 70s, it was a ghetto, but, um, you know, this is, um, you know, I run, I run my business out, out, out of paradise now, you know. No regrets about eight years on the, on the cement grid in L.A. That taught me everything. Um, but now we get to yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, this is an international audience, but to Australian audiences particularly, you are known for Home and Away, Satisfaction, um, Rescue Special Ops, which is which is where you know I got into your work. So, so what the, what right. was it that brought you to LA? Oh, um, I mean, it feels to me. Like it was a, a very organic migration, you know. I, I'd um, following, you know, underbelly, home and away, satisfaction, cops LAC. Actually, after after rescue, um, I did a, a series lead called Cops LAC, which just went one round. Um, but after that, I guess for me that was the ticking of the box of like, okay, so I I held my own lead. Um, it didn't go to season two, um, but after that, it was just a very organic process of okay, now it's time for. Hollywood, let's get in there, because um, you, because, because all we know, all any of us know is, at some point in this journey, we're going to be lying down with our soul on our transition bed, and there's only going to be one question, and that question is going to be, you know, did I, did I find out? You know, did I, did I go and find out? Because um, there's such a personal odyssey of this journey. I went and I found out. I've come back to Australia with, you know, my. My swag packed, I'm um, ready to build on both nations. So, it, yeah, it was just, it was very organic. It wasn't any sort of discipline or big decision. It was what happened. Yeah, next. yeah, yeah. I think um, that notion of being, as we call it, bi coastal, of being able to live in both countries, you know, uh, it used to be before COVID that all of the auditions that you did were in person auditions. And now, of course, we're all doing self-tapes and sending them into the casting directors. So is it fair to say that an actor of, of your caliber, so somebody who's got the credits and got the representation and is known, can, can live very successfully um, in Australia and then make the trip across when there's work? Well, look, it, 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 it has previously been absolutely like that. Um, I, I, as you know, they've got a few more Patrol guards at the um, at the boom gates of America for getting in and out is is a less fluid equation now, um, but um, I, I certainly actually had, if you will, kind of a very clear spiritual sense in a way that when um, it was clear that I'd gone and gotten what I'd come for by whatever definition that sits in in LA and it was also um, time to take my then four-year-old son back to Australia because his, um, his mother and myself were very clear that we would do a few years raising him on the cement grid, um, you know, with Disneyland down the road, it's not a hard mm. sell, um, but then eventually it would be time to head up towards Queensland to that climate to raise him. Um, but 
my point being is when it came time to move emotionally into this place of exodus I wouldn't call it a sixth sense but it was it was clear to me that where I was going the industry was following right. um, th- there's no greater explanation beyond the sense that I'm like the even if it operated in a sense that the work will come to me um, and you know I, d- I don't say that like I was leaving things to just be that I, I run a production company I'm creating my own yeah. work but I knew I could facilitate building on what I'd been lucky enough to accomplish in LA from where we were going to be based in Australia mm-hmm. uh, my son with his mother and myself just a little bit further yeah, away yeah, yeah. Um, LA is um, is a very spiritual place many people uh, find that they have a they get a greater connection to themselves um, that's maybe what in Australia would be called a little bit woo woo <laughs> and, and parts and parts of the states do you find that living in LA ramped up that that vibe for you or was it something that you'd all, always possess when you were in Australia Ella, that's it, that, that's almost the only conversation worth having about the Los Angeles journey. Mm-hmm for my money, it, it, it's that potent, um, because the awakenings, the, the deconstruction, the death and resurrection show, if mm. you will, of Los Angeles and my seven or eight years there, was, was so profound, for me, you know, it's, it's not something you can talk about in any in, in, in group, and it's certainly not something you actually over talk about mm. all the time but my personal journey in LA defined me I mean I don't think it's any great mystery that I, I happen to get sober no. over there you know a year no. into swinging and missing swinging and missing first thing is you get to LA and it, it's it's really important to get your psychology really not just comfortable but quite accepting of the fact that LA's not looking for new actors mm. it's not looking for new talent um, so get over that little hurdle but after a year or so, my, my partner at the time uh, said, you know, maybe maybe look at your family pattern. Um, and um, I took myself off to an AA meeting. I was one of the lucky ones, and I got it in the first meeting. Um, I'm close to that year sober now. Um, I don't even call it sober, I just don't drink anymore. It's just not something to my world. But... Talking about the journey of that nature on Australian soil, I could well have sat on the north end of Bondi Beach in that privilege and not have worked out some things that were brought to my attention um, for 30 years, you know, or, 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 or in fact not in this lifetime, you know, pops and things that LA just does not let you avoid staring right down. Uh, whether, you know, it, it, you don't stare it down. It's not, a, it's not a simple victory. You've got to, like, make certain levels of commitment. But I think, is that not the journey of the arts at its essence anyway? I think, I mean, I, th- I certainly think... I, I came to acting quite late in life. Um, and fortunately, I'm ageing backwards. <laughs> but I... I... Um, <laughs> I think... Um, uh, I think you're, you're absolutely right. There's There's... There's something in the water, and it's more than the solids, the mercury, and the, <laughs> and the, the necessity. The one big necessity is getting a really good water filter here. But I think um, I think there is such a, an incredible opportunity, right? There's such an incredible opportunity for uh, personal growth. I'm wondering um, how has that been back in Australia for you? Like, um, is that just a matter of your energy brings your own tribe to you, so it's not an issue, or? Have you come up against, um, um, you know, the odd person operating in an old paradigm or your old paradigm where you, you had to have a conversation or had to walk away? Or... <clears throat> okay, I, I think this is really interesting too because this part of a conversation really ignites me. Um, when people say to me frequently in the framework of what you just asked, you know, tell me about the LA journey. Um, you only answer the people that really ask, but when they really ask, my answer is actually the Los Angeles journey comes down to the level of discipline you have regards joining only the talking circles 
that really resonate with you. There needs to be some kind of samurai level discipline because the, the first people that will invite you in to that community, um, cause you know, it, 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 it's the world's biggest stranger mm. pot. No one from, no one in LA is LA, from LA. Right. Right. So it, it is the world's biggest backpack mm-hmm. hostel. And <clears throat> majority of those people are going there to either create a personality, identify a personality, have a relationship with themselves and work some stuff out, or um, keep running, commit to the demons, and, you know, join that other journey that LA is mm-hmm. famous for. But um, the personal journey for me was... The, 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 the first few conversation groups you're going to be invited in on, I tend to find where the community's taking comfort in talking about how hard the town was because, you know, that's the collective agreement. And I was just like, yeah. Um, so I, I, I found I sort of spat myself out of that a little bit and, you know, just hung back a bit. I, I of course, at the time had, a you know, my partner which was my own sort of insular community. But um, I just I just think, you know, you've got to like, your psychology is the only tool belt you have and the only tool belt you need. You're not going to be there unless you're sort of good at your craft to whatever extent mm-hmm. anyway. Um, so the, the greater part of the journey is, you know, wielding and, 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 and defining and, and folding the metal on your, um, on your psychology. And it's just like, I, and I think with LA, you've just got to, I don't like the word tough it out because it's a dance. You know, the arts is a dance. dance. And I think if you, if you could, Yeah, I think if you, you really commit to the fact that, you know, you want to... Maybe you spend the first few months just having a conversation with yourself, you know, about, like, learning and listening. But, um, yeah, the, the circles of how hard it is can be very alluring because, you know, sometimes that's where the... Majority of people in LA are not working and trying to work. And, you know, depending on their relationship with in their the chosen crafts, they're not working in their chosen craft, certainly. To be more precise, um, yeah. So I, I really think that you know, LA comes down to at least when we were there, because I don't know what it feels like now. I don't think people can sit around and talk in circles anymore. Um, so I think you know, it's a, you know, you, you get strong by being a bit into her there and then being really committed to your psychology. Yeah. But I do a lot of that affirmation work. I'm into Abraham Hicks in a massive way, whether it be, you know, Eckhart Tolle, Dr. John D. Martini, you know, Wayne Dyer. I, I, I just, that, that's my syrup. I pour that into myself, yeah. you know. Yeah. I drink my alkaline water, you know, sip of coffee, eat a bloody orange and hug a tree, you yeah. know. Even a little one of these guys over here. So, you know, that, that's just, that's just, that's what I need to fuel myself to keep my psychology in a, in a really healthy yeah. zone um, because you know, I've met my psychology in an unhealthy zone yeah. um, and spent, you know, 20 years there. So I, I, I have a sense of the very... I think what your story um, is talking to me about is the fact that, you know, when I first arrived here, um, my friends in Australia who are not in the acting game, or even some who were, were like, have you booked anything? Um have you, have you made it? I can't wait till you've got a, a star on Hollywood Boulevard. It was, oh, all of this kind of stuff. And I thought, I thought, wow, that's not, that's not really what it's about. But I kind of don't want to have that big conversation with you because it sounds like I'm negging you. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about that notion of success because there can be a tendency to think, um, you know, you have to be a Chris Hemsworth or, um, or a Margot Robbie or... Um, I'm just choosing those as a male and a female to say, define success. I mean, I had a conversation with a friend today um, who's defining herself by her work. And, uh, and of course, COVID has changed a lot of that. So it's kind of like, well, who am I now? And, uh, and, I, and I had the conversation, said that I was going to be talking to you today. So let me ask you the question, what is success to Martin Dinglewalk? Oh, look, you know, I, 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 I think sort of as of eight years ago, close to eight years ago, which is sort of my turning point on how you gauge anything, is, you know, isn't, isn't, isn't the bumper sticker now, you know, happiness is the new success? I mean, it, it, you know, as, as, as hokey and, you know, fortune cookie BS as that is, I 
it's just, you know, I, I don't think that's ever sort of changed because um, in the work itself, it's like, it's, it's my belief that the velocity of the courage you bring into your work comes down to the nature of the relationship you have with yourself. If you know yourself well enough, you will go deeper into zones that other people might not go into and, and, and explore. So it's my belief that the arts is an external and socially judgeable manifestation of your relationship with yourself. Right. Um, and in LA, it's a masterclass in managing your time, managing your resources, and managing the hell out of your energy. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your, your chi energy come to discover is a finite resource because you tap on exhaustion and fatigue in LA like while I was going for my auditions you know taking my path and now I've got a beautiful little baby boy and like those diaper calls never stop and you know if I'm not doing lip driving through the night or every weekend going and being Flash or Batman at kids parties like or, or you know running the hot bricks you know which is the, the radios for the the, um, the walkie talkies around on set there's not a job I didn't do in yeah. LA so you know just the, the flood of my baby's <laughs> shit yeah. um, you, you, you just do um, um, but we're all said and done look I, oh god I mean I, I, I don't want to sound preachy but it's my reality but honest to god man my perspective with what mattered and how I define happiness so fundamentally shifted when I, you know, decided that drinking wasn't, was, was not hidden in the darkness, man. It was my conscious daytime, you know, enemy. Um, uh, again, you got to, you got to select your community for that kind of conversation, but unavoidably you're asking me and that's my mm -hmm. conversation. That's, I know, was my crossroads. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'd, I'd actually... You know, to, to anchor onto that, if I will, I have, I got my first regards shifting of energies. My first feature film in LA, feature film lead, romantic lead, came as an offer, unheard of. And when the offer came through, I'm like, "What's wrong with this script? Because I'm not the offer. <coughs> I don't get offers." Right. Just to um, just to clarify, most of the roles that we go for, there is a, an audition process and they will cull it down from, I'm just going to grab numbers out of the air, 400 to 40 to 4. But when you get an offer, that means that the uh, production house or director um, approaches your agent directly and says, we would like Martin to do this role. Correct, correct. Yes, thank you for putting context. Um, you know your audience. Um, um, so about... about Less than two months after my, you know, my soul switch and my, like, I'm just, I'm not putting the toxins in anymore. It's just, it's too much of a, a static field for my being to handle anymore. Um, and, you know, when this offer came through, uh, we were, like, up and Martin, the romantic lead in this. Uh, I'm like, oh, God, how's this going to read? Firstly, it's like, what, yeah, really, so suspect. What's wrong with the script? <laughs> What, if, 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 is, is this mafia money? What's wrong with this project? And they're coming to me with an offer. And I read it, and it's like, oh my God, what? It made less sense, because it was Notting Hill meets Pretty Woman. I'm like, this is really well written. Like, okay, so take the deal. Instead of, oh, yeah, by the way, there's like five scenes in Russian, you're shooting in Moscow. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll learn some Russian. Cool. As it all played out, I would wind up in... Moscow, go from airport to studio, they put the script in front of me, we're four days out from principal photography. <laughs> <Here it comes>. <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh... Look at that free fall. And there had been a fundamental miscommunication between my representation at the time, because they didn't expect to hear what they heard, so they didn't go through their filter correctly. And when they gave me the Russian written script, I'm like, I need the English one. They're like, well, it's, you know, this, this is the one. I'm like, no, the one you sent me. Like, well, we're not using that. It's Russian. I'm like, but I, I don't read Russian, so I need. And that's when I just pasted it together and had that. And um, we pieced together within probably two minutes that there are five scenes 
not in Russia. That I had signed on and had the money out of escrow in my account. Um, that was surely gone already. So you you were uh, booked to shoot a film and did you have any experience of the language? Who does? Russians do. I, no, no. So yeah, I was there and I'm just like I had that like polar flex just explosion of sickness. And, and was there a was there a coach oh. on set for you or there was there was an old school um, uh, Chekhovian uh, linguist. He had a linguist. They're very trained people. I had a personal assistant, which wound up becoming my full time. But um, this is like, oh, holy sh! Okay. But then I realised that if I if I now kind of now that I put together, pull out of this project, we got a hundred people out of work. Because, like, it, it was just a, a, a phenomenally, and, and, I, and I mentioned this and I put it in the context of the, of the journey, because when I'd made that commitment to myself, regards, I just, I don't want that junk anymore, I, I, I've got to take, I've got to fix something up, if I'm going to be an artist, I've got to, like, fix something up in me. Um, the gods would, would, would send me something that demanded that I activate so many parts of myself that were in the shadow mm -hmm. hands. Like the, the extremity of what I had, I had subconsciously willed into my experience. So then, you know, for the next 40 days, we're shooting a romantic lead, which looks stunning, and I'm playing a romantic lead in, you know, I got Radvucha, Belikadushno, I got some words in there, but it's like, it, it was an out of body experience that demanded so much drop your bullshit. Um, that um, that was sort of like my first catalyst-driven experience into the world of clarity. <laughs> That's ex how long was so the then, shoot? Oh, like four weeks, and it was like we wound up going up in the hinterlands in a town called Mushkin on the Volga River in the five-week window that is not either rained out or under snow. Um, and you know, it's on our prime, full all that jam. The movie I saw at the Russian Film Festival in Sydney, no less, was like, that's not the movie I shot. I don't know what I that, that edit that. I remember Tom Cruise saying that about Jerry Maguire. He's like, James Cameron, um, uh, no, 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 not James Cameron, um, the creator of Almost Famous, Jerry Maguire. Cameron Crowe. Right. Um, Tom was holding his Oscar. And said, Cameron, um, that's I, I don't I didn't shoot that movie. I don't know what you did, but you found moments and performances you needed. I had the same experience, you know, in a cinema that no one else was in except a bunch of Russians. Which going, that's not the movie I shot. So, cinematographer, editor, director, bravo, because I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Wow. Mm. That's um, yeah. so. You've done a you've done a few things that are getting some attention here. It was great to see uh, Cipher. There were billboards all over town for Cipher, and I've got to tell you, I watched it, but I'm not good with scary stuff. Um, and just to give you an idea, I was watching Kate Winslet in Mayor of East Town on Sunday night on HBO Max, and I started off right. bum on couch, feet on floor, and I wound up feet on couch. And then I wound up bum on back of couch, feet on couch, and then just covering my face going, no! And I had to stop it. Pardon? It was a yoga class. Oh, well, pretty much. I had to stop it 10 minutes before the end. And it was the same with Cypher. It was scary. But it's very much loved. It's great. And the other thing that I want to see that you've done is the dry. Um, was that shot here or in Australia? Yeah, well, I just want to clear up. I didn't really do the dry. Um, I, I, was, I was lucky enough to get a call from Rob um, Hawley, just saying, I want you to pop back and do this. And it's like, uh, of course. Um, so that was like sort of my, that was in the exodus period. So that was my welcome back to country, if you will, right. movie. Um, so I went out there. I was only out on set for, you know, a few days. Um, and, and it just perfectly coincided. Um, with my move back to Australia. Um, um, so, sorry, the nature of your question, by the way, you know, well, it's just gone, it reached 20 million, it's box office, it's now got the States. My name's coming up in Google 
alerts like a couple of times a day um, over the last week because which means thank you Eric, um, Bruna, Made Up Stories, Jane and uh, Rob for putting my name in rotation in the States while so right, this is Bruna, Bruna, Bruna Papandrea. Yes, who, yeah. who was doing some amazing work and was uh, was behind um, Big Little Lies, um, yeah, and well, um, and also um, Eric, the Eric you referred to, Eric Banner, of course. Yep. Yes, yes. Thank you. For no, the no, no, no. Yeah, I think we're probably top one hundred or top really ten most influential um, content producers on planet Earth right now. So you know the Australians once again are cracking it. So. What a phenomenal team. And of course, what a, what a masterstroke by yeah, the world. Yeah, just brilliant. Just brilliant. So, what a, yeah. so um, God, can I ask this question? What, um, you're producing your own content. What have you got going on at the moment? Well, I've, um, I've, um, I've brought my work home with me. I, I previously ran a production company, Alchemy Film Productions, um, 15 years ago. Um, made the, um, as it were, Steven Soderbergh and Alchemy Film Productions in Australia were neck and neck to compete. It wasn't a competition. It just happened to, timing-wise, be that. The first feature film shot entirely on new digital technology called Red yep. um, But, of course, you know, <clears throat> we didn't... Um, we're excited to execute, but we hadn't done the all the groundwork because by the time we hit completion, the industry was still not equipped to screen digital right. movies. And to then transfer from digital to, to, to a, a film reel was just nonsensical. Um, but, you know, we went to Santa Barbara Film Festival. We got <clears throat> People's Choice Award, Audience Choice Award, did really well, made infinitely good contacts, but no one saw it in Australia. Colin Friels, David Field, myself for the lead, Mark Fitzpatrick, writer, director. Right. Um, so we did that. It's on Ausflix right now, um, Ron Brown's operation. <clears throat> um, did I get that right, Ron Brown? Ausflix? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, um, so anyway, I then moved to America after that, did my thing, and I've come back and I've reset up Alchemy Film Productions to 2010, it got released, so 10, 11 years after the fact. And I'm setting up a major TV series um, to be shot out of Queensland for the US market with myself in the lead and executive producer, you know, to um, to make sure that I can, you know, primarily be around my son who's six um, and I don't want to... In the world of, of questionable border closures, I would not permit myself to be marooned abroad. Um, away from my son, so I'm, you know, creating content for the US market, creating jobs in Australia, mm -hmm. and making sure that, um, you know, I can take advantage of the platform that, you know, has been afforded to me through Cypher, um, and keep presenting content yeah. to the market, um, and, you know, that's what yeah. we do, right? I, look, I think, um, I think at the beginning of the isolation, which for me started March 9 last year, I, I was saying to my, you know, I've got my five, my 15 and my 50, my, my people, you know. So saying to the five, my... Oh, you, 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 you're, you're sharing circle circles. of Yeah, so I've got the five, which are the five close friends, and the 15 and then the 50. Um, and then there's the, the, your, the other suckers, right? Um, <laughs> the spillage. Yeah. So, you know, I was saying, uh, I think I'm going to be... I think I'm going to be very different coming out of this. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to be. But I think the world is going to be a very different place. And I think I'm going to be a different person. And and as it was, I was fortunate enough to get some scholarships to study with Eckhart Tolle and study with Locke Kelly and, um, and do some pretty cool stuff and, and spend a lot of my time doing voiceovers in my studio, which fortunately is, is in my home. And um, and right. doing self tapes and so on, um, but also spending a lot of time out hiking. So um, you know, masked up and off we go. Um, but you know, it was a it was a really interesting time. So I think um, I'm looking forward. We're opening up here on June 15. Um, I've yeah. been wow, double vaxxed. I'm I'm what's known as the mod squad. Um, Moderna vax. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it's been a very different experience here, you know, than it, than it was in Australia. Um, 
but I, I, I just think you know these are these are interesting times, and what you're doing is you're you're pivoting to meet to meet the need, as it were, you know. So because things are not the same as they were, purely and simply. Yeah, look, you know, Ella, it's 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 a funny thing because you know in LA, you are spending so much of your you know life force. Um, using the audition framework to establish a reputation as a performer. Because, um, you know, they, they say to you, you know, they, these casting agents sometimes need to see you for a couple of years to know that you're not an in yep. and out. Um, you know, I had, um, so, you know, you, you, mostly it's, you know, sowing seeds. We know that the healthiest psychology you can take of an audition is you're getting an opportunity to present your work and build your reputation. Mm -hmm. um, let go of the idea of getting the job. You're just... <laughs> creating a relationship. And the audience are the work, yeah. you know, and you just, this is what you do. So in, in light of that, coming back to Australia, that sort of freed up, if you will, the time for me to go, right, now that I'm here, there's my little boy, there's the ocean, here's me, pulling out the body of work that you are cultivating independently as a creator, mm -hmm. that... Um, you're always very excited about, but you sort of shelve a little bit because you get to LA and your your entire infrastructure of priorities yeah. changes. You don't have time to go back and create. You're like, get out the door and audition. Um, so you come back here and you're like, right, the desk is empty, all this stuff there. And, um, you know, fortunately for me, you know, the guy that I gave it to, to oh, to, to look at, to give, give his critical feedback, then sent it to his writing mentor. Um, so I've had it in the company for a while of someone that is exceptionally good at their craft. Um, and so, you know, I've got the best people in the different departments. Um, one of my skill sets maybe, apart from, you know, being an actor and now executive producer of this series, is maybe, you know, not <laughs> not making enemies. So I've sort of still got that team I can put mm. together. Because what do we do, man? We, we, we live in a... Um, it's not just the productions that are ensembles. As creatives, our entire lives are an ensemble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's all collaboration. Absolutely. Without that, Absolutely. That. Well, um, I want to let you get back to the... Is it, are you going back to the beach, back to the surf, back to the laptop? What's next? I uh, will go out there for a little while, um, stretch it out, come back. And, yeah, I've got um, I've got no shortage of things on my laptop that are asking for my attention today. So, yeah, there's... um. Yeah, the slate, the dance card's full. That's fantastic. Martin, thank you very much for your time. And I just, mwah, I, um, I'm excited for what you're going to bring to all of us next. So thank you. Thank you for giving me time, for showing interest, for the questions. Um, yeah, it's been my pleasure. Sure. And I'm you know, glad that you asked to have a chat. I'm grateful for, for you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, okay. darling. See ya. You've been listening to Tate Fountain with Ella James. Available at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or your favourite podcast player. You can also stream on demand at Bytes.com. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com.